Oh, better shut it off. Hi guys, and welcome to today's task. For today's task, we are still on the road. We are in the Florida Keys where it is very muggy and it is hot. And we are currently putting this RV's air conditioning to the test. I am in no ways an expert RVer, but what I do know is if you're using a fifth wheel, it is recommended that you have two air conditioners, one for the living area and one for the master bedroom because this air conditioning unit pushes out to little sub vents, kind of like a house system does. And it's smart technology, but it really isn't the most efficient technology. And so that room, up where my wife and I are staying is definitely not the coldest in the RV. While this room in here can get to very cold temperatures and you're still hot up there. Since we've been here, I have put this thing to the test and it's worked really, really well, but I've learned a few things that it doesn't like when you're cooking in here very much. So if you can try to do what you're cooking on the outside of the camper, if possible. We did a crock pot dinner that was a long cook time and it was working against this in the room and the hot air on the outside. And at the end of the day, this machine was losing. I found one simple thing that you need to check on to make sure you're getting the full value of this unit because any little impairment makes this thing not work efficient and we can't have that. So what you're gonna do is take off these sides and you can see those cobwebs in there. This thing is a little out of season and needs some cleaning totally normal. That's normal wear and tear, but there's another vent up in here. And this guy is where the problem is. Right here, you can see this is vent that's clean because air is coming out and going through it. This on the other hand is where air is coming in. And if you're not getting good air in, you will never get good air out. So we need to pull these vents off and clean them. Not a big task, but that little bit of airflow in such a small area will impede that and you will lose dramatic temperature change. So to show how simple it is, I'll do it one-handed. Pop this side down, pop this side down, set this guy aside, preferably on your father-in-law's ladder. And then this little guy kind of tips out to the side and just slides right out. And there you go. This is your intake for your machine and this is your exhaust for the machine. So air comes in here and here and goes out here and here. So all I'm gonna do is just take water and run it over reverse. And I do kind of recommend using colder water because hot water can heat up the grease that gets trapped in that and that doesn't always come out, but cold water will help it go out a little bit easier. Damn, those big chunks of that. And although this is not my RV, if this was, I would be still doing the same thing. I would have to clean it and it would get just as full of debris, I'm sure of it. This little bit of maintenance though, goes a long way for helping your RV get a little bit colder, but it also makes it so that it doesn't have to work as hard. So it increases the longevity of it. Just little bits of TLC make things run a lot better. I'm gonna go through all of these because we may as well. And I still kind of see fibrous material in there. So I'm gonna turn this to the jet stream and see if that'll help clean a little bit better. I think it's helping a ton actually. Getting a bath at the same time, but that's okay. That is much better. I do want to keep track. This end was the bad end. This end was the good end. And I'm gonna leave it just set in an orientation so I don't forget. Same thing on the next side. Wipe them dry. Clean them up. One thing I want to keep in mind is this one over here was the dirty side on here and this side was clean. I want to actually flip this around now and put it on this side because the clean side that was always clean will be where the intake is on this side. And then the dirty side, even though it's still clean now, will be on this side. So it'll be sucking from the best uh, open area possible on these vents. Just slide them in place. I hope they'll go in. Yeah, there we go. Get going. 
Oh, I see. Too far, Joe. Too far, Joe. Now I'll bring these vent covers off. These really are kind of what hold it in place and wash those off. They're not too bad, but it'll help. Now, let's put them back in. Like so, like so, like so, like so, like so. There we go. One down. To go. Perfect. Now these air conditioner filters are cleaned and you will be sucking more air and it'll be running a little bit more efficiently on the inside of the RV. So you can hear my neighbor's air conditioner is running and they won't shut off at least until 10 or 11 o'clock tonight. It's a little cooler right now, so maybe they'll shut off earlier. Theirs is about the same length as mine, but notice they have one, two, and three air conditioner units on their RV because these things don't cool down very well. They're not insulated very well. They're just not built for that huge temperature swing like your house is. So you need the units uh, built into these to compensate for that. Holy crap, I'm getting eaten alive by these no seams. They're a joke. Okay, next thing we wanna look at is up here on the actual air conditioner itself. We wanna look at these fins and they look really, really clean. I thought I would get up and see debris all through there, but I don't. And that would be the last place. These no seams are too bad. I gotta get down, holy cow. And that would be the last place I would recommend you look at is on those fins on your air conditioner on the outside. If it's dirty, take it apart real quick and clean it up and then put it back together and turn it on. You will gain some, just like if you've seen my how to clean your home air conditioning unit, um, it's the same principle on the outside of this. You just gotta keep it clean, make sure it's not holding any debris um, and maintain it. So if you guys like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And until then, we'll see you guys next time. In the keys, look at that, oh gosh. Guys. Florida's incredible, except for the bugs. Mm, oh my gosh, I'm getting eaten alive. Ha, oh, you little bugger. I can feel them. Oh, it's because I crawled back in those bushes. Oh my god. Look, do you see that little bug crawling around? That's a no see -um. He will eat you alive. Are you barking at me? She's a naughty little barker lately. She is. How big was the spider this morning? Pretty, it was pretty big, bud. Big enough that your mom would have screamed. Wish I could turn that one light off. It's gonna be bright, okay. We're putting, we're putting this RVs. Gotta go potty? Yeah. Okay. Okay, hurry and go potty. Okay. You're not gonna, like. I found a few things that help. I found a, I found a big simple thing you need to make sure is in check when you're do. I found one. Now this is cleaned and repaired and re repaired. It's not repaired. Insulate well. I think real Floridians probably just laugh at us stupid tourists because we come here. We think we got to worry about alligators and snakes. Not even, not even close. Or sharks, no, no. You got to worry about the bugs, the no-see-ums and you can't see them.